little bunny friend. The baby bunny ran out from my garden. <laughs> Glad I'm not opposed to sharing. Hi there guys. Sorry it's not sorry, it's Tara uh, from the Ten Acre Woods. We're gonna do a gardening tour. Uh, we are on, I think, week 14, because I we missed week 13. Um, but Mark will correct that if I'm wrong. And uh, it's been a while, we had some big projects. Got the barbecue area all done. And uh, pretty much at this, this stage of the game, the garden takes care of itself, grows. And then I just come through every once in a while. So I haven't been in here in a while either. So I'm gonna go through with you guys. Uh, we are going to go to the hollyhocks. We are uh, now taking the seed pods and we sell our seeds in the spring. Uh, another plant that uh, is can be uh, eaten or is uh, good for the garden is this one here is called Creeping Charlie. And it's uh, really grown up really nice in here. It's a nice ground cover, little purple flowers. The black hollyhocks, oh, I was so happy with them this year. So I've saved quite a few seeds as there was a lot of requests for black hollyhocks. And there was a lot of the companies that sell the seeds were out of them. So I have a huge amount this year because I collected them all. And then of course the rose hollyhock. So there'll be another month or so, they'll keep going. And then, uh, oh, I gotta get those seeds though. Look, those are, those are all falling apart already and gonna seed themselves. Maybe I need more hollyhocks in here, eh? Can never have too many hollyhocks. All right, so that's the hollyhocks. The rhubarb is pretty much done. I did put some in the freezer for some uh, rhubarb crisp mixed with apples. And then this now, so this hollyhock was done. If you remember last year, this section here had a lot of hollyhocks. Hollyhocks are biennials. So they only come every second year. So I always replant every year so that it's continuous. The ivy is starting to turn. It goes a beautiful red. That's the Virginia creeper. And uh, of course it is making its way across my deck. We had a whole trail down here. We had a wedding on the weekend and we actually used it. I cut off a lot of it and used it along the tables for decorations and hanging in the tents as it was a rainy wedding. So that kind of added a little green. The bride also came and did her bouquet with all the flowers from the garden, which was very nice. So she had a mix of hollyhocks and comb flower and actually I think she took some sun choke. The sun choke, I have to grab the seeds from. I will actually just repot it. I'm planning this pot here that has the ivy that started and another pot at the back with ivy for the boys. Oh my, oh look at this, look at the sunflowers. Wow, I'm gonna get a lot of seeds off them. Nice, beautiful flowers. Okay, another one way up there. That one's gotta be eight, nine feet. Nice. So the boys have a very uh, sparse rock in front of their house. So we'll plant some of those in there too. Those will be really pretty against the, the house. Very soon I will be harvesting all the carrots, all the potatoes. I think we have a frost on, uh, well, I, I, from, if it's according to the post, it'll be Wednesday to Thursday. And I already harvested the marshmallow, but it looks like I could actually get some more out of there. Uh, the cone flower, as soon as it dries, I'll take all that. And I'll, again, we use all the seeds for the seed swap in the spring. The safflowers, I love these flowers. They, I, I discovered them by mistake. And it is the replacement for saffron, which is a very, I hear, expensive uh, in cooking world. So, uh, the, sa the safflower can be used instead. The catnip, which I harvested all, is all coming back. Oh, the fennel is taking off. Look at that. That's the fennel. Nice. 
have to research the harvesting of that. It was pretty small. All right. Oh, what is this one? Is this the tansy? No, nope, that's thyme. Sorry, that's thyme. Now that is something. Let's see, what is that? That is something that I planted. <laughs> I planted the gooseberries back here, but I don't see any, anything coming out of that. Chives have gone to flower. It's always low, the, look at the bees on there, nice. More rhubarb, these ones are a little better in here, or this one is anyway. Sweet melon or cantaloupe? Do we have any? I don't see any. Not this year, I guess. All right, yeah, look at that Virginia creeper, how red it goes. The asparagus. You know, I said I would harvest next year, but it actually looks like I could come out and pick a few prawns for Mark. Fry them up. And lots of new babies. I put all the seeds back into the ground. Oh yeah. You guys are all done. The gooseberry, the... Lots of baby asparagus. That's what I want to see. Because I only had like four or five. So these can actually all be cut off now. And uh, or maybe I'll see if I can get more seed out of it. All right. So we also planted the grapevines. So I don't see any green on that. So that might be a next season deal. And this is where I just plugged in all the grapes. See what comes next year. Definitely have to do a raspberry harvest, I see. So I also took a lot of clippings and planted, potted them, and I'll sell those. All right. Strawberries still have flowers. Chipmunks have been enjoying the strawberries. We didn't get that many and the slugs were going in there. So I just kind of left the strawberries for the... Oh, okay, peas are done. <laughs> See, this is what happens when you don't pay attention to your garden. Uh, the parsley's doing really well. Cilantro. And then, uh, of course, once it uh, goes to see, once it is adult, it's coriander. So the peas, I'm expecting to see like a. T oh, there's not a, there's not a lot. I know I ignore them. I was gonna, I was debating on. I did let them go too long. I should have. Oh, those are a different kind. No, those are all still good. So the animals get all the plants from this. And we get all the beans. Well, the animals do too. Um, but it's, uh, as I harvest out of here, clean out, up out of here, then it'll just go over the fence to the animals. This was the barrage. It uh, grew quite big. I will probably plant it in a center aisle. Well, actually, I believe it recedes. It's not a annual, but it does recede itself like an annual. All right, oh, somebody's enjoying the basil. Looks like the snails and the slugs were in here. <laughs> That's what all the marks are on the leaves. Uh, it's the slugs. And I find the best way to get rid of them is to come out at night with a pair of tongs and a flashlight. And you can get them all that way. Oh, a couple of these guys have gone nasty. So we'll have to pull that out. We'll throw all that to the too wet I'm gonna have to turn off my uh, for the rest of the season I will turn off sorry I keep moving the camera Mark's gonna yell at me <laughs> we'll throw that over to the animals and then I'll harvest uh, the, all this white mildew on here is uh, because it's too wet I should have we've had three days of rain and I ignored it, but I'll harvest the uh, fruit off for the animals. Clean it up. And, uh, oh, we got some, the squash likes it though. 
quite a few. Whoa, let's push that guy through. He's stuck in the, we all let him hang. He's stuck in the board. All right, the so squash is up there. So they'll do it, but I'll turn off the water because at this point with the mil the dew in the morning, they really, I, sh I won't be watering now, but lots of nice fruit on there. Yeah, all right. So we are gonna go over to the watering station because this automatic water comes on every night. We really don't need it with the rain, but you see, see how it says off? I thought I turned it off. Obviously I didn't. Okay, so I just uh, took off the hoses. I'll turn off the hose and that'll be the end of the watering season. And actually just detach the unit. This has actually been a little scary around here this year because I really didn't trim at all in here. So you see the raspberries? Uh, the boys are coming on Saturday. So I figure we'll leave harvest until Saturday. I don't see any, well there's a couple on the ground but I walked through there, that's probably why. Um, and uh, attacking the tomatoes. <laughs> but it's weird because, yeah, so I'll just, the tomato, there's not really, I, not only really red ones, but there's a lot. So, like there's a lot in there. So I'll cut off all the tops so that it stops producing and just focuses on, uh, uh, on finishing up the fruit that is actually on the plant. All these raspberries. I'm afraid to walk through here. There's so many. But the animals like them just as much as we do. I hear somebody over there. Right here over there. Haha, <laughs> I can't even get in there. That's my, that's my garden. Tomatoes on the left, raspberries on the right. So in order to get in here, I am going to have to come in and start clipping or else I'm going to just break the plants. So it'll be harvesting raspberries and trimming up the tomatoes. That'll be this week's chores. I think that's pretty much, the rest will kind of just, <laughs> sorry, it's so big. <laughs> it literally is, uh, I'd say six feet from the building, but it's all like going down, up, down, up. It is nice though, because it actually, with the fabric on the ground, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't get, uh, what do they say, like too wet, which is nice. So we'll see what's in there when I get in there. That'll be interesting. And any of the fruit, like, we've probably got another month that they can be out here. So I'll just trim it back, stop it, stop them from growing, and then they'll, uh, the fruit will all ripen on the, on the vines. What's happening in here? Not much. I really didn't use my greenhouse this next this year. I I would like to. I always say start my uh, tomatoes in here just so they they're done a little sooner. Oh look at that! Always like this. So these are volunteers in here. But you see what that is? That's catnip. Can never have too much catnip. So we're growing catnip in the. Nice. Catnip, catnip, catnip. I probably dried some seeds in here or planted them in here. All my soil ready for spring. That's nice. I got all my containers in. Uh, we had uh, some drop-offs, so they'll have lots of containers to plant next year. I was actually thinking of putting... Uh, I discovered... So, sorry, finished my thought there. Um, Catnip is of the same, like it uh, repels mosquitoes and flies. So I wanted to plant, it also smells really good. So I wanted to plant some up at the uh, barbecue area. So the cuckoo melons, we had a good feast out here at the wedding. We kind of came around, we showed them a bunch and they ate a bunch. I harvested a bunch of the strawberry spinach, but it'll go, it'll go until freeze. It'll just keep growing. 
but it does look like this section is squash at least. I will probably remove most of the leaves so that, oh, it did continue over here. Oh well, it's the end of the season. Okay. What do we got hiding in here? Anything hiding in this bush? Yeah, too much water. See, see the, uh, sorry, you got that mushy fruit there? Too much water. So I did pull a bunch off of here. Oh, there's a nice size one right there. A white, I think that's the butter. No, that's not. Butternut is a little yellow. That's another type of squash. I knew there was one. Oh, that one's ready. Up there on the deck. I like it when they go up on the deck, then they stay nice and uh, dry. Another one on the ground. So you'll find them everywhere, I'll say there. Now, I wasn't quite sure this one, it actually looks like a cross between a watermelon and a squash. But then, it's always fun to see what you get. Oh, another big one there, that's a different one. Right there. Nice little yellow guy. Oh, big one's back there. Oh, a watermelon. I think that's the biggest watermelon I've ever grown. <laughs> I always laugh because I always, I grow watermelons every year. There's another one back there. But you know what? I'm really not good at growing watermelons. And that one is actually a nice size. We had grown some one year and I couldn't figure out why they weren't growing. And as it turned out, they were a mini. And it was so, it was like, oh, well that's why. So then all in here too, the beets uh, will let, uh, I'll pull some of the tops and uh, freeze like carrot tops, beet tops for, you know, like eating in the, over the winter. Then I will also dehydrate some to use in like pasta dishes. So this stuff will all, the tops will be harvested to eat. It's also really good to dry and keep the tops because I can always feed it to the animals uh, in amongst their uh, feed in the winter. It just gives them that little extra that they don't get in the winter. And then, uh, so I'll harvest the tops first and then I'll come through and harvest the bases, the roots, you know, the beets, the uh, carrots and potatoes. I like to leave them in as long as possible. And that first free, first frost isn't gonna hurt them. It'll just top the, make the top stop. Um, in the walnuts, we uh, ended up with two new ones, which was nice. So we'll let them go until next year. And uh, see, well, we'll just keep letting them go and just see what keeps popping up because they're, it's going to take a bit to get through those seeds because they are hard to crunch or to crack open. So, but I didn't really, I didn't notice any go missing because of the squirrels. I put some extra seeds here. I give them away when somebody shows interest in them. All right. That's another pot that the boys could probably plant something in. Very, very, very happy with the Virginia creeper. And uh, so all of this, my plan is that I'll let it go along the house and along the fence, but keep the center clear so that we can walk. And all of this over here on this fence, I'm actually going to put up into the top of the deck so that it can continue to grow around. And uh, that'll be nice. I'm not sure. Oh, it <laughs> sure grabs on. So this one, we actually want to keep going. So I'll put that up there and keep it going across. I don't know, it's kind of like you're, you're in your own little jungle hideaway in here, which is kind of nice. All right. And then I think, I'm not sure if I told you or not, but I do want to plan on getting some Manitoba hardy grapes because I figure I've got all these arbors and I should have grapes on them so that it's actually harvest something you harvest look at this Virginia creepers like help me help me no get back to where you were you don't belong on here <laughs> oh story of my life 
Virginia creeper going where it shouldn't go. But I love this stuff. It's so pretty. And it just, the color change is amazing. Mind you, so is rhubarb. Look at that. All right, guys. That's my garden update. Short and sweet. I mean, this time of the year, it's just waiting on, uh, waiting on things to uh, get bigger, right? And end a season. So as things kind of die off and finish up and I harvest the fruit, then all the veggies, uh, vines and plants, other than the tomatoes and rhubarb, everything else can go over to the animals. And same with us, a lot of the time, the leaves of the plants that we grow are just as good for you as the fruit, if not better. Um, so really research what you're growing. Um, tomato leaves are a great pesto. And uh, yeah, just uh, keep researching, keep looking it up. It's amazing what you can learn and what you can put on the shelf for future use. Uh, alrighty guys, so we'll say goodbye from the 10 Acre Woods and Tara's garden update. Bye guys.